Hello everyone, welcome to today's special Spotlight webinar. In today's session, I'm going to show you how to tweak your web maps with URL parameters. My name is Ana Manzanares and I work as a product manager here at Carto. So the agenda for today, uh, we are going to start with an introduction to URL parameter. What is this tool? What is this new functionality and how it can benefit me? Then we are going to jump into how you can use this functionality so that you understand how you can use this uh, directly when, you know, working with your builder maps. And third, we are going to go through two different use cases to showcase how you can dynamically control your maps using URL parameters. So what are URL parameters? So using URL parameters, you can basically create a specific views, multiple views from a single map. So this allows you to control how the map is going to be loaded when the end user is accessing that specific view that was shared. This basically reduces the need of maintaining multiple maps with the same data. So to give you an example, imagine that you have different departments working on different regions for a specific project. So you might have a team that requires data that is in London, other required data that is in New York, other that is in Madrid. You have this data, which is covered globally, but you want to share this specific data, this specific view for each specific department requirement. So how URL parameters can help you is that you can customize the specific view. You can tailor that to the user needs. So instead of having to recreate and maintain multiple maps with the same data, you can actually share specific views so that when the end user is accessing the map, they are focusing on what's important. So you can also focus on your resources on other important matters. So as you can imagine, this is a very flexible uh, functionality that allows you to create infinity views from a single map. And with these parameters, you can control the center of the map, the zoom level, whether you have added a mask or whether you have a filter applying widgets or an input value updating a parameter control. So the flexibility is, is quite powerful and we will be showcasing you how you can leverage this from within the cart application. So how you can use URL parameters? The first option is interactive with the map. So as you interact with the map, the URL will be dynamically reflected with this specific view status. So imagine that if you zoom into a location, if you filter a Pi widget, that will be reflected in the URL that then you can very easily copy and share with other users. Remember that this is only applicable for viewer mode. So you need to be seeing the map, accessing the map as a viewer and users instead of an editor. The second option is to manually add these parameters to the URL. For this, it uh, doesn't need to be manually. You can automate this and we'll showcase how you can do that. But basically, you can follow our naming convention to manually add parameters to the URL. In this example, I'm showcasing how you can add the zoom level and a specific value, value for a parameter, and that will allow you to update the URL. So let me show you how you can basically do that when you know interacting with the map. So here I'm the editor of my map. I have you know, this is a specific map that I want to, you know, have users accessing it. So I'm going to publish the updates and now I'm going to open that in a different URL. Uh, and you can see here that it has opened. Now, if I now zoom to a location, you'll see how parameters are added to the map. If I now want to focus in instead of tornado, I want to focus on hail. This specific data is also added within here. This means that now, if I want to share this specific view in the middle of Florida, if I copy that URL and paste it, there you go, you are able to see that specific view, which means that you can share views 
with a specific users and you can rest assured that the data displayed here will be the same that is showcased for, for you, that the same view that you uh, specifically created. And then they can, of course, work with the data, they can remove the specific mask applied, uh, they can, you know, keep working with the data, working with the map, and share that if needed for, for another use case. Um, and let me show you now and jump to the manual addition example and how you can automate this. So in this case, um, I am using a spreadsheet, but the truth is that we could demonstrate how this can be integrated with uh, any other system. So here I'm assessing whether risk events also by state. And then for each state, I want to have a dedicated map link that my users can very easily access when needed for project purposes. So what I'm doing is using the web map URL, I'm concatenating the different parameters values from this list. So I'm adding the state. Oops, sorry, I don't want to modify. I don't want to modify that. Uh, I'm accessing adding the state, the lat long to make sure that I zoom to that specific location and also the zoo level. So this means that now if I go um, click on view the map for Florida, it's going to open the map center at that specific location for Florida. So this data has already been filtered and is displaying, you know, what's the estimated property loss for uh, Florida, what's the estimated crop loss, what's the time stamp on that specific uh, severe weather events for that specific state and so on. And then we can, you know, go and maybe try New Mexico. So we can jump in New Mexico. And then again, this will be showcasing data only for New Mexico. It's been filtered and the user can focus on what's relevant for them. In this case, weather events within within uh, New Mexico. So you can, you know, have a think or you can sort of understand how flexible and powerful this is so that you can specifically share multiple maps views very easily, very seamlessly with your end viewers. But how can we use this same concept when it comes to embedded maps that you might have in a custom application, a website, or even a third party? company. So let me demonstrate you very easily an example that we have here using Retool. So Retool is a software that is very cool if you need to create very quickly a custom application using low code. Um, in this case, we are using the iframe functionality to embed the builder map that we were uh, showcasing before. And we have a set of parameters. So these parameters are equivalent to the parameters control that we have in the builder map. So you can see that we have the state here to filter, we have the event date to select the specific time range, and also what is the event type, the weather event type that we want to select. So we have However, we decided that we want to we want we don't want to show this in the UI. So, in the map setting for viewers, we have this removed, which means that if I go and open this map uh, as a viewer, I won't be seeing these parameters. Something very cool for you to very quickly see what viewers are going to view is the new preview capability. So you can very easily jump and you see that there are no parameters here. So these parameters can only be leveraged by adding them within the parameter URL. So now that you get an understanding, let's go back to redo. So what we have done here is mimicking the same scale parameters, but within our custom application. So here we have one to select the specific states from a list. Here we have the specific weather event. So we can select hail, tornado, or wind. And we also have the 
start and end date of the US server other events. And we have incorporated an apply so that once the user has selected their specific uh, values, the required values, then they need to click apply for them to take effect. And we have here an event handler so that when they click apply, we are going to ensure that the URL is updated. So very similar to the example of the spreadsheet, but in this case, we have a piece of code here that is taking the input from the different parameter that we have in the custom application, concatenating it so to make sure that they work, and then returning the URL parameters updated value that will collect, you know, the state parameter, the type, asset type, and also the start date and the end date. Um, apart from this, we are going to ensure that the application is basically scrolled into the view of the map. So let me show you how this works. Uh, here, you can see it's loaded in Massachusetts. Let's go to an example uh, with uh, Florida. If I click Florida, I want to showcase all the different events, right? And I click apply, and this is going to now, you know, showcase data from Florida. So here you can see how your parameters can work for your embedded maps. Uh, likely, uh, thankfully, um, this is now uh, available not only for public maps, but also for private maps. So you can now embed a map that has been shared with the organization or even with groups. And you can combine that capability with URL parameters to provide a seamlessly user experience to your uh, end users. So that's everything from my side. If you want to know more about URL parameters, I invite you to check our documentation, the URL parameters. And also, if you go to the academy in the sharing and collaboration, we have a specific tutorial talking about how you can dynamically control your maps using URL parameters, where we basically go through this specific tutorial, how to dynamically update URL parameters, but also how you can use that in retools in case you are interested to replicate this specific application. So yeah, thank you all for your time, especially for those that made it to the end. If you have any question about Carto, about Builder, Geospatial, anything, just please feel free to reach out to our community or directly to myself. Thank you all and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.